poor creature and I close the door and he's like begging. What do you want, baby? No. <laughs> oh my goodness. So let me turn this. Yeah, so um, today I had like almost two hours with baby Oscar. And he did something. He's there watching, waiting at the door. <laughs> That's so cute. You are so cute. Huh? Hey, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm in love. I'm telling you, I'm in love of this bird. <laughs> hmm. So it's a little bit chilly now. And of afternoon like that. So um, I wanted to uh, share with you something about sleeping. <laughs> he's at the window, he's watching. <laughs> and um, about sleeping, I have uh, one of my followers who told me she had uh, trouble to sleep and, uh, and asking me if I had some tips about that. I don't. I never had trouble to sleep. I never took pills or things like that. And uh, it's really, uh, I think I'm going to open the door because it's tap beating on the door. Let me open that door. It's going to be cold, but I don't want him to. What do you want? You want to come in? Huh? I let open for you. So now, let's see. Like this, he will not beat in the window. Yeah, so... Um, Unfortunately, I don't have uh, something special and came to my mind something. I don't know if you follow me. I did some months ago an experiment with breathing about a little issue of incontinence. And uh, it, has, it brought me this, this um, uh, process and this experiment brought me to something really interesting. Uh, that I knew already because I had, uh, you know, I did for years, my tripod is not good. I did for years um, uh, songs cl uh, class in Paris and we were working with the bottom of the body, with the perineum and all the sexual area to get the more power to the voice, the spine being like an arch you really have to be down, to contract down and to bring the pubis forward to make your spine really like an arch, like that. And like this, the vault of your palace become really high and you have a beautiful uh, box of resonance as your body is like a tool. So I had the idea to work on this um, area for this little incontinence that I don't have anymore, and uh, just uh, contracting the muscles there. I did that with the breathing. I did some video about that. I did that with the breathing, and this brought me in a state of ecstasy, really. Like, like when you have an orgasm, but it's never hand. It's like, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a state of bliss, and I noticed for example, the morning, if I wake up early and I want to stay to bed, if I focus my breathing on the bottom of my body, meaning that, and I explained that what I did with the breathing technique for uh, to, to tonify that part of the body, I noticed that when I, have, I am breathing like that, if I put my consciousness, my awareness down on my body, after like maybe not even five minutes, it's like I breathe from the bottom, not from my nose. I sure I breathe from my nose and my and I, I can exhale, inhale and exhale from my nose. But if I put my attention down there and I imagine that I'm breathing from the perineum. I feel down there that uh, presence and in a few minutes I fall asleep. So yesterday I was thinking of that before this uh, person, uh, this uh, followers asked me about uh, something 
to sleep. And yesterday morning, I wake up and I practice that. And again, I, fall, I, I fell asleep. So I said, wow, this is very interesting. And I was thinking about that. And I said, mm, in fact, it makes sense. You know, when a baby is crying, he's crying with so much power. The power comes from the bottom. He's screaming with the most strongest power because it's this power of life, you know, and it's screaming with the bottom, contracting the bottom of the body. And I, I was thinking of that. I say, yeah, now I know why they scream. They scream like that because this obliges them to, to, to contract that part, to be there and to be more down. And in fact, to like stimulate that, that flow. And after a while, it's relax them. Because when I do this strong uh, exercise, contracting, you know, like exhaling, contracting really strong, holding, inhaling very slow. And like I imagine I inhale from the bottom, very, very slow. It's like becoming very warm down there. And all the coccyx area and all the, the bottom of my body the womb, all that become like expanded and breathing by itself. And when the babies are crying, after a moment, the stimulation brings a relaxation. And it's, it's quite, and I noticed also when I had my babies, they were not really crying at night. I was blessed with them. But I guess also because I was in empathy with them. Uh, for me, it was very easy. I breastfed. Uh, them so I had their little bed beside mine and when I was feeling they were needing to eat I did not even change them I just breastfed them and put them back and I had really no problem uh, like baby screaming and all that I also noticed when sometimes they were going to cry if I hold them and I beat them on their bottom again the same area nicely like that, after a moment, they are totally at peace. So because this vibration in the bottom, in fact, bring them down there and make them at peace. And it's it really, it really work. I don't know if you have babies or all. And I had babies in my arms after when my mine were grown because my son going to be 50 this year and my daughter just turned 47. But when I have babies and they, they scream, I know I take them. And also with my heart, it's like, don't be scared. Everything is fine. I love you. And I, I just hold them, one my hand in, my, in their back and the heart on my heart like that. And another one that is just beating softly like this vibration in the bottom of the body. And they love it. Try if you have babies, if you don't do that. We do it instinctively. I never read this anywhere. I just do it. I just did it like that because I felt it was, you know, when you can be in empathy, you feel in your body was a need of the other one. And this is, is really, uh, really interesting when you have that because you can go directly as a therapist, if you are a therap therapist, a practitioner, you can go directly by massages, you can go directly where the person needs to be touched, needs to be massaged, and you can stay as long as you feel when you do the massage that the person needs to have this attention at that part of the body. Um, some people can be easier, it, it, it can be easier for them to be in empathy than others people. Um, but it's just a question of presence and don't have um, disturb, disturbance with, for example, sounds, radio, TV all around. If you are in silence and you are really present to the other one, you can feel, you can feel when you touch, especially when you touch the other one, you can feel the need where they want to. Your hand goes, your hand knows, and they go where it's needed, and they stay as long as it's needed. It's, it's really fantastic. Like when I am with baby Oscar, he's still here. <laughs> when I am with baby Oscar, you know, um, I don't speak. Oh, I'm sure I tell him he's beautiful, but often I just stay in silence. 
And yesterday it was really amazing because it was raining and uh, yesterday or before yesterday and windy and he's scared of the wind uh, because I, I was feeling in my body how it can be disturbing for him because when I am in the wind very strong wind I'm disturbed as well and I was feeling him like you know like that and always on the defensive always like and with the rain and he was like miserable looking at me like that you know like oh poor creature and I was looking at him and I said come in and I was feeling he wanted to come in, but he's still, he's wild, he was still afraid, you know. So I felt, yes, I want to go. No, I cannot go. Yes, I want to go. No, I cannot go. It was really, really interesting, really. It's, uh, it's really fantastic. So this is what I wanted to, to share with you. Try, try, if you have, even if you don't have trouble to sleep, just enjoy, just enjoy that. Just be... In that thing, I love to do it early morning. It's like a kind of, you know, being in silence. I don't like very much the word meditation. Uh, for me, it's like limiting and bringing, for some people already, a kind of stress because they don't know how to do it. But it's more like be in silence, be with yourself, enjoy, feel. The morning when I wake up, I'm like, Oh, it's good in my body. I feel good in my body. And sometimes I turn again. I also something, I sleep better. I, I fall better asleep on when I turn on the right side. Uh, I, I more, I, I cannot even read the evening in my bed because I fall asleep immediately. I was with a friend recently uh, in the desert and I wanted to work on my pictures the evening on my phone and I fall asleep with my phone in my hand. I can't. I, I cannot uh, do something as soon as I'm lie down and in bed in less than five minutes. I'm poof, <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> so try to go maybe to found the side where you sleep better and meet the right side. Um, and just feel, just, it's pleasurable. It's really, it's really a, a good feeling. It's really when... Just put your attention there and breathe like if you breathe. Use your imagination like if you breathe by the bottom, like if your nose it's the bottom of your body. And you will see, you will feel the, the, the breathing, the movement down and all the bottom of your stomach. You will feel that. And it's really, really good feeling, really. And it's like expanding there and bringing peace because you are not anymore in your head. This is the thing, you have to really go down in your body. When you are down on that part of your body, your womb, it's the womb is where we, we create life as women, where life is growing inside of us. So it's a sacred cave. And when you go there with your mind and your imagination, you are not anymore in the mental. You go really in the deep of your being, of your body, and you go where there is this alchemy. You know, it's there where there are also the intestine and all the alchemy with the food and the blood and all that. And it's really all that part is very a sacred space. The heart as well. But this, there is something very, we can say visceral. Yes, it's visceral. And it's, uh, it's very powerful. It's, you know, the, the bottom of the body, the perineum is the center, the basic center, the first center of energy. It's where our two legs catch the energies of the ground and join there. And wow, we get this power of the, pla of the planet, of the earth, you know, of the soil, of nature. And this... And when we work with our imagination and we connect to, to spirit, this comes from there. And when, because when we use our imagination, we have to think about that. We have to decide with our mind that we're gonna use that and do that. So this comes from spirit, this comes from higher. And with the desire that is from the heart center, we combine this and you see, I just think about that and I have the great feeling down there. And this, our intention 
from our heart, the desire to have good, to feel good, to give good, with the bottom, the strength that is there, the power, and this really brings a state of bliss. So I wanted to share this with you, Tori. It's, I have no technical work. I discovered that by myself, I know it exists. Because some, some months after I started to do this breathing technique that is my, that I decided to do by myself. I did not search in books or workshop or anything. And uh, after I found a book where it was saying that uh, it was an ancient technique that the Egyptians were using. So uh, it's quite very, very interesting. So I wanted to share this with you. I uh, thank you very much. I, again, it's still beginning of the year, so I wish you a lot of good and beautiful things. Uh, connect to beauty. This is really important. Beauty is a direct manifestation of the divine for me. So create beauty just even for you, just, you know, like in your plate, in your food, in your surroundings, just for yourself and this is going to feed your soul and when you feed your soul you feel much better i also uh, i'm thinking of something i also took i can say good resolution because since i'm here i was a little bit distracted by so many things and i was not really regular in my yoga practice but i must say that since a week i start again every morning um, for me, the best time is every morning when I st when I wake up. I take my shower and I do yoga. If I don't do it that after I'm taken in my activities in the day and I don't do it. And I do a little bit evening before sleeping. And um, I light a candle and I have my little, you know, ritual just on the floor on my carpet. But uh, I must say that since I'm doing that, uh, I feel... Uh, much happiness again, <laughs> my baby is here. Hey, baby! <laughs> and I feel much um, more, happi more happiness. It's really interesting. The fact to give to yourself, to feed your soul of something pleasurable, sometimes it's hard to go on the floor, you know? It's like, oh, oh, oh. this morning I did it outside, it was cool, but I had my cardigan, I had my sweater, and at the beginning I had my scarf, and I did it in the sun, just right there at eight o'clock, uh, even before it was seven o'clock. And it was great, you know, no wind, beautiful weather. And after I did later a little bit more uh, at 1.30 naked and uh, sun bathing just to have some sun, it was very warm and it's wonderful. So yeah, so have a nice weekend. And uh, if you have questions, you can message me and try, practice, experiment. We are here to experiment. Experiment, you have everything here, your body. And uh, it has been my best teacher. So this is really, really amazing. We live the most amazing story in our right here, there in our body, science fiction story in our bodies. So big kisses. <laughs> Bye.